everybody and welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. I'm your host, J.A. Curtis. You guys know you can just call me Alex though. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on um, the new features in Laravel 5.3, specifically the changes to the routes file slash routes folder, okay? So for those of you guys just jumping in, if you wanna learn all the new features coming to Laravel 5.3, we are in the middle, we are in part three of the series. So if you wanna move over to part one, we go over tons and tons of all of the small features that I could couldn't really make into individual videos. Then in part two, in the last video, we talked about the directory and file changes that happened, um, things like the node modules and you know what's changed inside the app folder. And then we mentioned in that video that the routes folder now, or the routes file has been removed and we now have a routes folder that contains three different routes files, okay? So um, I want this video is all focusing on the routes files, what's changed with routes files, how do you edit them, how do you work with them, and stuff like that. So without any further ado, let's dive on in. All right, welcome back, guys. So, um, so with the routes folder, um, basically the biggest change that's happened is we've now created. Taylor has kind of set a precedence that you can now separate your routes files um, into or your routes into separate files. In the same way that you might create different controllers for different purposes, you can do the same thing with your routes. Um, you can create different routes folders or files for different purposes, and all of your routes files will go inside the routes folder. I'm going to keep stumbling over that because I'm so used to saying routes file and now I have to say routes folder and uh, the web routes inside of your routes folder is what I need to be saying. And so I'll keep stumbling over that and calling it the routes file when I mean the routes folder. And so I apologize in advance. Okay, so basically what does this mean? Okay, what does this mean? And then the other question we want to address is how does this, what does this mean for upgrading? Okay, well first of all for upgrading, I'm just going to go ahead and get it out of the way. If you have a Laravel 5.2 project and you update to Laravel 5.3, nothing is going to change, okay? And we're gonna talk about this in just a, in a little bit after I go with the, over what these folders are, or the, what these files do, but um, basically, there is a, a file inside of our service provider that allows us to point, um, you know, to be, to any, the routes folder being anywhere, or the routes files being anywhere, and so it's gonna to continue to point to your app PHP, or app HTTP routes.php folder, or file, Told you I messed this up. <laughs> um, it's going to point there and it's going to continue to work as normal. But if you boot up a new Laravel 5.3 application, you're going to get this uh, new structure. Okay. So I love this new structure. There was a lot of debate on Twitter on what do we do with the routes files? Do we just keep them inside of app HTTP or, um, or do we uh, move them to be kind of front and center with uh, the inside this routes folder? And so I'm really a big fan of this. In the Rails community, routes is brought up. I think it's actually in the app folder, but it's at the base of the app folder. Um, and uh, having it right here, I think is really good. To me, this is like a almost like a configuration setting. It's similar to config. Like actually, that's where Rails is. Is Rails? I think it's in the config folder. You have config, and then you have routes. Dot, dot, uh, dot uh, rb is what I think it is. Um, now it's been a while since I've used it because I've been so on the Laravel train. But anyway, so now we're it's in the base of our application. I think it's awesome. Okay, what does this these folders mean? These files mean? Well, here you'll see we have our web.php, and these are basically all of your web routes. This is what your these are what most of your routes are going to be on most applications. Um, these are anytime someone clicks a button, your post requests, you know, where and stuff like that. Like everything, your you know, all your resource controllers, everything like that will continue to be inside of web.php. You can see we have our auth routes here. We have a get request to home. We have a get request to the actual index page. So all of these things that you're used to, this is your main file. This is where you're going to hang out most of the time is web.php, okay? We'll talk about what this includes in a second, but that's the web.php. This includes the web middleware, and we'll um, we'll show you where you can look at this, but it includes all, the med, med, all of the web middleware by default. So CSRF protection, um, all that kind of stuff, um, setting up sessions, Everything like that that you're used to with the web middleware is now in here by default. So anything you put inside this file, any route that goes inside this file will automatically have that, which is great. It gets rid of all those route groups that we used to set up that you used to have all these long, long routes files with all these groups and that's gone. Now we can make individual routes files and just throw them in this folder. That's gonna be awesome. I think it's gonna be way cleaner. I'm super excited about this change. Um, up here, you'll see an API.php, and as you would expect, this is for your API. This is the um, 
Um, this is going to include the API middleware. It does not have the uh, CSRF protection because most of, most of the time with your API, you you actually don't need the CSRF protection. Um, it includes throttling by default. Anything you put inside this folder will also have a um, the slash API prefix. Okay, so even though you see slash user here, you'll see that if I run a um, if I run a PHP artisan route list that you'll um, you'll see now that even though that was just slash user, we get API slash user, okay? So that prefix is by default. So anytime you make something inside of here, it's gonna be under that slash API prefix. Um, so anyway, that's kind of what comes with this API.php is anything you put inside of here will inherit those characteristics. And this is for creating your API, obviously. All right, so that's awesome. And then you'll see this console.php, and this is an interesting one. Um, we talked about this in episode one, where we could, uh, part one of the Laravel 5.3 series, that how you can make these um, artisan command closures, right? We talked about how we could make these. Well, in at Laracon US, um, Taylor Otwell kind of teased jokingly that you could actually make your artisan commands inside of a um, routes file if you really, really wanted. So I don't know if this is serious or not. I'm currently on release candidate one for Laravel 5.2 or 5.3, which should be the final release. So my guess is that this is going to stay. And this includes all of your closure based um, artisan commands. So you can make a bunch of artisan commands inside of this routes file and you have access to them now inside of your um, terminal. So if we run PHP artisan um, list to get all of our list commands, you'll see this inspire list up here at the top. Here's our inspire list. Of course, we have the one that we made, the I'm, remember that? You put I'm and then your name and then it says hello. So um, you see this inspire one, which obviously comes from right here. And then it goes into this class and gets a quote out of there, okay? So um, anyway, there's that's kind of a new thing as well. That's in all of your files inside of your routes folder. Okay, now the question is, I kind of mentioned here, oh, well, this includes all the web middleware. This includes the API middleware, the API prefix, the throttling, all that kind of stuff. Well, how do you know that? And how do you maybe change that? Or how do you add some of that functionality to a new file if you want to make a new file? Well, let me show you. So basically what we're going to do is we go up to our apps folder. And then inside of our providers, you can find the route service provider. Inside of route service provider, you can find um, all of those, those groupings. Okay, so here we can see we map the, the web routes and we create a route group just like we used to in the old days. And we put the middleware in here and the namespace and everything like that, okay? So the, everything in for our web.php file, which you can see right here, so it links it to this route slash web.php, and um, everything is wrapped inside of this group, so we get the web middleware by default, and then obviously this namespace. And then down below, you can see our API routes is the exact same thing, okay? So this links to the API.php, and we get the API middleware and the authentication for the API, okay? So um, we get both of those functions out of the box. If you wanted to add more, you could just add more. If this is just an array, same up here. You could just make turn this into an array and you could add, if you wanted this to be all, you know, for your logged in users, you could also do auth or maybe this, maybe the web is your guest and then you're gonna make another group, another like um, you logged in.php or something for all your logged in routes or something, if you've got a ton of them. So then you can make this one your guest middleware and then everything inside of this routes file has the guest middleware and everything in your other one could have the logged in middleware, the auth, auth middleware. So you can add that functionality if you want. Just wanna show you guys that that's possible, okay? So um, what else do we gotta learn here? That's basically it. You can see here that we also add the prefix. This is where the API prefix comes from. So if you wanna add that, this is where you do it or you can edit it. And um, yeah, that's basically it for the route service provider. The last thing I'll show you before we go is basically how do you control, so we see here that this middleware includes the web middleware. Well, where does the web middleware come from and what? how can we edit what's in the web middleware? Okay, well that happens inside of your app, HTTP, kernel.php, and inside of here you can find your, your middleware groups. This is the web middleware group that contains all of these middlewares. This is the API middleware group that contains these um, options right here, okay? So um, this is if you wanna change the throttling. I mentioned add throttling by default. This is where the throttling comes in. This is 60 requests every one minute, so one request a second. 
So if you wanted two requests a second, you could do 120. Um, that's kind of normal. Use your 120 or 180. Um, 180 is three requests a second. Um, but anyway, just depends on what you want to do or throttle for your users. So you can see what all of those are here. And of course, if you need to edit other middleware, you can see a lot of those down here. This is your route, uh, your route middleware. Okay, so that's basically the routes.php file. Um, it's now all located inside of this folder. And then we've got this, um, we've got these individual files and you can make more if you need to. And um, it allows us to kind of keep things separated and clean, which is awesome. And we no longer have all these nested route groups and prefixes and all that other stuff. We now can just have individual files and it's all at the base of our application, which I think is slick. I think this is the future. I'm super excited about this change. Hopefully you guys are too. The next video is gonna be all about the global cache helper. So we're gonna talk about that in the next video. I will see you over there.